Have you ever wondered what all of these things have in common? No, it's not because they make sensual sounds or look sexy on screen. It's that they all work in perfect harmony because of math. Some mechanical engineer in the world did a ton of math somewhere and pulled a lot of all-nighters. And no, not this kind of math. I'm talking about calculus one, two, multivariable calculus, differential equations, and linear algebra. You know, those classes that mechanical engineering students hate the most. These are classes we all swear we would never use after university because the professors just throw formulas and equations at us without ever stressing their real world engineering applications in mechanical engineering. Students then end up thinking, yeah, I don't need math. Mechanical engineering is all about building cool things, and it is. But what separates a mechanical system that works, be it a rocket, airbag, surgical robot, or smartphone, from one that fails catastrophically usually comes down to the numbers. You don't need math until you do. So you might be able to get away with designing pretty things in CAD without knowing any math 70% of the time, but there's still a 30% chance that you will need math. It's in those very moments that separate out the great mechanical engineers from the average ones. So in this video, I'm going to show you why math is essential and why you won't make it as a mechanical engineer without it. Professors don't make any effort in showing students why math is so important and incentivizing them to get good at it. At least my professors certainly didn't. So what I plan to do in the next few minutes is to break down each class and why you need it for mechanical engineering. As a freshman in university, you will take Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. In these classes, you'll learn how variables like velocity or temperature change over time along a path or across space. You'll learn how to take derivatives, which tell you the rate at which one quantity changes with respect to another, often time or position, and integrals, which describes how a quantity builds up or accumulates over time or distance. So for example, velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time and tells us how fast something moves. It's also referred to as the first derivative of position. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time and tells us how fast speed changes. It's also called the second derivative of position. For example, when analyzing the motion of a piston inside an engine, you need derivatives to describe its changing velocity and acceleration. Analyzing piston motion ensures that parts last, improves fuel efficiency, and ensures your car doesn't sound like it's about to explode. Or if you're calculating how much energy a shock absorber absorbs during impact, you would need to use an integral to calculate the area under a force versus displacement curve. Now, the third derivative of position is called jerk, which is not as common as velocity velocity and acceleration, but is often analyzed in the design of occupant restraint systems and suspension systems in cars to prevent injuries and in passengers such as whiplash and to maximize ride comfort. Jerk is also important in the design of motion controllers and CNC machines with jerk limitation features. Rapid changes in acceleration of a cutting tool can lead to premature tool wear and result in uneven cuts. Next, as a sophomore, you'll take take multivariable calculus and differential equations or diffiqs. Multivariable calculus expands the ideas from single variable calculus into three dimensions and beyond. You'll learn how to work with partial derivatives, gradient vectors, double and triple integrals, and vector fields. In mechanical engineering, these tools allow you to analyze systems that vary across space. For example, when designing the internal cooling passages of a gas turbine blade, you need to to calculate how temperature and heat flux vary throughout the 3D geometry to prevent thermal failure. That requires triple integrals and gradient fields. When analyzing how air flows through a Formula One car wing, you integrate the pressure distribution across the surface of the wing to determine lift and drag forces using principles from fluid dynamics. Next, differential equations are essential in mechanical engineering because they allow engineers to model systems that vary 
vary across space and time, which is pretty much any railroad system. There's ordinary and partial differential equations. Ordinary means the function only depends on one variable and partial means it depends on two or more variables. A second order differential equation means the highest derivative in the equation is of second order. It could be either ordinary or partial. So this is a second order ordinary differential equation for a damped spring mass system with derivatives in time only. This would be a second order partial differential equation. Second order because it has second derivatives with respect to space and partial because it includes derivatives with respect to two variables, space and time. In your coursework, you'll learn how to solve these equations with techniques like separation of variables, Laplace transforms, and numerical methods. One of the most complex and important uses of differential equations in mechanical engineering is fluid dynamics. The Navier-Stokes equations are a set of partial differential equations that describe how fluid moves. Whether you're designing or analyzing airflow over an airplane wing or the flow of oil in a pipeline, the Navier-Stokes equations model how the velocity of the fluid changes with time and space, factoring in viscosity, pressure, and external forces. In applications like suspension systems and vehicles, a bump in the road is modeled using second-order differential equations to determine how the system oscillates in response to external forces. The damping and spring constants play a key role in these equations and solving them helps optimize ride quality and safety. When designing a heat sink for electronic products, you need to understand how temperature changes both over time and across the material. This behavior is of course governed by partial differential equations, specifically the heat equation which describes how heat spreads through the material. Solving these partial differential equations helps determine the thermal performance and efficiency of the heat sink. Of course, as mechanical engineers, we would never solve these problems by hand and will leverage finite element analysis, computational fluid dynamics, and multi-physics software like ANSYS, Abacus, and Hyperworks that uses advanced numerical methods as well as powerful computers to do this. But understanding calculus and differential equations is is the first step to knowing how to properly set up a simulation in the software and interpret results. Now, university curriculums will have slight variations, but it's likely in junior year, you'll take probability and statistics as well as linear algebra. Both of these were two credit courses at Boston University, which is where I attended college, as opposed to calculus and differential equations, which were both four credit courses, but that doesn't mean they're not as important. Probability and statistics statistics is incredibly useful for designing components as well as processes that must perform reliably under uncertainty. An aircraft's landing gear strut is a fatigue critical part that endures thousands of takeoffs and landings across its lifetime. You'll learn to apply probability distributions like normal, weeble, or exponential to model variability in loads, material properties, and failure times. The course also covers hypothesis testing and confidence intervals, which are key to validating whether design or material changes actually improve reliability. Regression analysis helps identify which variables most influence failure, while control charts and process capability indices like CP and CPK are used in quality control during production to monitor and improve consistency and performance of a process. For example, it could be a manufacturing process for turbine blades where dimensional precision is crucial for performance and safety. You might track the thickness of the blades at different points during the manufacturing process to ensure consistency. If any of the measurements fall outside the control limits, you would know something in the production process needs adjustment. Another crucial application of statistics is tolerance analysis. When you're assembling an aircraft subassembly, say a wing flap actuator, even tiny variations in part dimensions can stack up and lead to misalignment or performance issues. Statistical tolerance analysis allows you to model how these variations combine and assess the probability that the final assembly will still meet design requirements across thousands of production units. Now, in linear algebra class, you'll learn all about vectors, matrices, linear transformations, systems of linear equations, and how to solve them with various iterative methods like Gauss-Seidel, as well as eigenvalues and eigenvectors.
vectors. On the surface, these concepts might seem very abstract and useless, but let's say you're analyzing a statically determinate truss structure. You'll use systems of linear equations to solve for reaction forces and internal member loads. These systems are often expressed in matrix form and solving them is critical for structural integrity. When working on robotic arm kinematics, matrices represent rotation and translation in 3D space. You'll use homogeneous transformation matrices to calculate the position and orientation of the end effector relative to a base coordinate frame, especially in forward and inverse kinematics. To perform FEA analysis, you'll discretize a structure into elements using a mesh, formulate element stiffness matrices, assemble them into a global stiffness matrix, and solve for unknown displacements using matrix methods. Control systems for things like autonomous vehicles or robotic stabilization are modeled using state space representations. These models involve a system of first order differential equations that are represented compactly using matrices. Stability, controllability, and observability analysis all depend on computing eigenvalues and eigenvectors of system matrices. Now, before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that was instrumental in developing my understanding of math and engineering fundamentals was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. It helps you get smarter every day with thousands of hands-on lessons in math, physics, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant uses a first principles approach to break down problems. Their lessons develop problem-solving skills by allowing you to experiment with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lecture-based learning. Brilliant's lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you learn from the best. Brilliant fosters critical thinking through active learning, not memorization, so you become a strong problem solver. It also builds the habit of daily learning, essential for both personal and professional growth. Brilliant's interactive bite-sized lessons enable you to learn on the go and make the most of your time. One of my favorites is Brilliant's calculus course that actually helps you see how derivatives and integrals work through powerful visuals that build your mathematical intuition. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild or scan the QR code on the screen or you can check out the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Without math, mechanical engineering design and analysis is just guesswork and maybe you can get away with designing a product that looks good, but it will without a doubt be far from perfect. Without perfection, a Boeing 777 or Airbus 330 doesn't fly for 30 plus years without breaking apart. The aircraft exists because mechanical engineers used calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, simulations, and testing to predict how every part in the system would behave under extreme stress, heat, and vibration through mechanics, stress strain relationships and constitutive models. Now say you're designing a robotic arm. It looks flawless and CAD, but the moment it operates at speed, it shakes violently. This isn't really a mechanical mistake, but rather a mathematical one. The design failed to account for resonance frequencies that amplify vibration. You could have easily predicted and avoided this by analyzing the system's differential equations and solving its eigenvalue problem to identify the natural frequencies. Now, if you're someone who says, I'm more of a CAD person and I'm not really interested in math, well, then I highly suggest you not to study mechanical or electrical engineering because both are very math heavy. Without math, your designs are pretty much meaningless. You can make a part look perfect, but will it hold under load? Will it deform too much? How will it fail? Will it fail under fatigue? Will it resonate at 60 hertz? The answers to all of these questions require math. But hopefully, and I truly mean this, this video is able to spark your interest and motivate you to get good at it if math isn't your strong suit or something you're fond of. Learning math doesn't have to be about memorizing formulas or doing textbook problems on end. And I speak from personal experience. Try and practice small problems with big context. Even a spring math stamper system has deep implications in real products. For every problem that you solve, 
solve, ask yourself what real world problems can this be applied to? What I like to do is leverage FUA and CFD simulation tools as well as MATLAB that allow me to apply these mathematical concepts and reinforce a theory. So next time you're staring at a differential equation thinking how never use this dumb equation, remember you're not solving for X. You're building something that could potentially carry lives through the sky or safely land on Mars or brew the perfect cup of coffee at 96 degrees. So whether you're analyzing a mechanism, predicting failure, or optimizing a system, math turns abstract ideas into concrete design decisions. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about what I do as a mechanical engineer, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.